What's going on guys? This is Mike with Michael Anthony Photography. Thank you for checking out my article in this month's Shutter Magazine. As you can see guys, this month my video is going to be a little bit different. I want to take you into the back end of how we do uh, some of our workflow techniques and our, our workflow processes um, on our production computer. So this is my home production computer. Uh, as you can see in our article, uh, I have two of them. I have one at our office and I have one here at home because it's, uh, it's often that I'm going to be um, doing a lot of work from home in order to stay on top of uh, our workload that comes through our studio. So I just wanted to walk you guys through a couple of things, uh, our, our structure for naming our files, how we go about backing things up and working on things to get the, the best results from Lightroom, then also how we go about um, using Lightroom's export presets in order to uh, speed up that workflow just a little bit more as well. So uh, going to our Explorer real quick, you'll notice here um, on my, uh, my quick access here that I have a folder here called Working Drive. Now on my other production computer, I have a dedicated solid state hard drive uh, that is just a working drive. On this particular machine, it's a two terabyte uh, internal drive where my operating system is stored. And I have uh, a folder set up in, um, on the, the main hard drive for my, uh, my working drive. This is where all of the production related tasks are gonna happen. So for instance, we will import images directly to this drive uh, internally. Uh, we will work on do all of our processing on this drive and all of our exporting on this drive as well. Lightroom really does benefit from having a solid state hard drive. Uh, and I do feel that when you're working with, uh, with weddings or you're working with a higher volume of images, having that ability to uh, quickly uh, and efficiently get through your workflow is really beneficial for staying on top of your tasks and making sure that you guys don't fall behind in the delivery aspects of uh, working with your clients. So images, for instance, uh, you know, if we had a wedding, images will come uh, onto this drive. And the way that I work out our naming structure is something like this. So let's just say that we had a wedding today. As you guys can see down here, it's Christmas Eve. Um, I would basically put a, uh, make a new folder for our client images. I would go year first and then the month and then the date, uh, underscore, let's just say this is a wedding, it would be W and then uh, underscore again. And then I, we would use the groom's last name in this particular instance. We used to use the bride's last name, but after they got married, uh, that last name would change and everything would get really confusing. So let's just call this person Mrs. Smith, right? Uh, from here, inside we would create five different folders. So I'm gonna, make these really fast so you guys can see what we're, what we're doing here. First one would be raw, and that's where all of the client's uh, images are going to be downloaded to. Once the client's images are completely downloaded into this folder, we'll use Photo Mechanic to select the ones that we're gonna pick. And from the ones that we're gonna pick, that, those are gonna go into a second folder called Masters. Re eventually, our JPEGs are gonna go in this folder right next to the, uh, the raw selections. And there's a reason for that, and I'll tell you what that is in a second. Uh, next, we're going to create a folder called web. And this is where I am going to downsize all of these images with watermarks and, and put them in here. And the reason why I do that, guys, doesn't take a lot of space on the hard drive, but it does allow uh, for really, really easy social media posts. Uh, later, Jennifer goes in here, she grabs images out of this folder, and that's what she uses to do, uh, to do our blogging or our social media campaigns. Uh, the next folder that we're gonna have here, is going to be for the catalog. Now, as you guys know, we use uh, Evolve for our images uh, to edit them. Now, Evolve typically sends us back a catalog of images. From there, we'll make our modifications, we'll fix some stuff that needs to be fixed, and then we will export the catalog directly from Lightroom into this folder. Uh, those of you who are using a NAS system, as we are, uh, as you can see by reading our article, you'll know that you can't work directly off a catalog on a server. Uh, Lightroom does not allow you to do that. So we store the catalog here, and if we need to use it, we'll copy it to our working drive, and then we'll, uh, we'll use it that way, or we'll import it into our main catalog, which is usually what we do. Uh, the last uh, main folder that we have here is gonna be for ProSelect. Now, we use a in-person sales um, business model. Uh, all of the images will go into ProSelect. We're going to create an album here. And the reason why I do this ahead of time is so that when our salesperson sits down with the client, all they have to do is open up this folder and they can go right into their presentation and, uh, and just make that happen. Um, we will create two additional folders at a later time after the sales session, one for the, uh, the print order and then one for the album. Now, organizing your files like this 
it will help you uh, avoid a lot of headaches later down the line trying to hunt down images. Um, as you guys know, if you're a wedding photographer, uh, it might be a year before the client comes back and actually selects their images for their albums. I know a lot of you guys have a system in place to kind of help those clients pick, uh, pick ahead of time. I just want them to be able to take their time. Uh, we don't put any rush on them to select their album images. So sometimes it could take a while before they come back. And by then, uh, a lot of times, if you have changed hard drives or if their um, your images are scattered uh, across different drives, it could be a headache to try and track stuff down. So using this system right here, we know exactly where everything is supposed to be. I have access to the catalog if I need to make changes. I have access to the raw files. I have access to the masters. Um, we don't delete the, uh, the unselected raw files, but if you guys wanted to, after the fact, you'd be able to do that because they're all selected here in a separate folder. Uh, it just gives you a lot more organization and uh, flexibility uh, with this file structure doing it, doing it this way. Um, so that's how we go about uh, organizing our files. Now, after you guys, as you guys know, uh, I just showed you our working drive, but I wanna show you how we store our images too, so you can see. Now, most of the time, uh, we will go ahead and create all of these catalog or all these folders, should I say, on our working drive. However, when the client, um, I'm sorry, when we're finished with this, we don't want to necessarily take up all the room on our working drive because as you know, SSDs, they don't have as much storage capacity as regular HDDs, right? So what we will do is we would actually take these folders right here and we'll copy them. And then we're going to put them back on the server. Now, as you can see here, this is our NAS server. Uh, it's one hard drive, but uh, the computer will look at it as four separate hard drives. You set that up in the in the uh, Synology uh, desktop app. Now, for instance, we have one for MA Photo, one for Studio 23, one for uh, the Boudoir brand, Marilyn Lou, and then for our Headshots brand as well, too. So under uh, MA Photo Production, we have separate subfolders right here. As you guys can see, the ProSelect Network folder, this allows me to sync ProSelect data across all of our computers. So we keep that on a server where everybody can access it. I, in the engagements um, uh, file tab right here, we can go ahead and click a, uh, any one of these right here and you'll be able to see how this was set up right. Now, what we would do off that working drive, we'd copy those folders, we'd bring them back over here and we'd paste them here. Then we would go in here and we would verify that all of the masters are in fact, uh, in, fact in, the in the folder that's on the server and then the numbers match the one on the working drive. And once we do that, once we verify everything is good to go, we'll go ahead and just delete it off of the working drive uh, to free up some of that space. Um, from here on the server, this gets synced with my server at the studio. And then also our cloud backup service is looking at this constantly and it's actually uploading these images directly to the cloud. Therefore, uh, we minimize all the risks that we can possibly have of losing clients' data. Uh, as you can imagine, you can't get rid of every risk, but as much as you can uh, minimize it, that would be, be best. Uh, lastly, the last thing that we do is we actually will back up um, these drives right here, I'm sorry, all these images to a, um, a uh, I'm sorry, excuse me, we'll back up only the raw images when we download to a, a separate HDD. So if we lose both our servers for whatever reason, or if something, you know, God forbid, gets deleted off one of the servers, um, then we actually have that backup to go back to. And uh, even if we have to re-edit the entire wedding, at least we have those files, we didn't lose them. So that's our file structure system. Now I wanna show you just one quick thing in Lightroom, how we go about, um, how we go about exporting images and uh, how we use Dropbox to sync up our portfolio as well too. Now, when I am on the go, which is often, I do still wanna be able to work. I wanna still be able to do some social media posting. I wanna be able to do, um, you know, some work from, uh, on our pricing or whatever, maybe our marketing materials. So I do use Dropbox in order to sync uh, a lot of our folders across all of our work computers. Uh, we have, I believe, seven different uh, computers, not including our laptops uh, that, you know, we're working on. Either I'm working in different locations or my staff. Uh, but we need to be able to sync all that information. So I do use Dropbox to do that right now. Um, and in Dropbox, most importantly, is where I store a lot of our portfolio images right here. So our portfolio images are, are stored in Dropbox. They're backed up on our local machines as well, too. Um, but when it's in Dropbox, it's pretty safe because it's going to be uh, it's going to be stored on their servers and then across all of your computers as well, too. Um, but uh, inside, uh, for instance, our portfolio folders, you'll see that we have separate portfolios related to every single type of um, type of photography that we do. Now, I'm going to take you uh, real quick into Lightroom to show you how we go about exporting images directly from here into these portfolio folders. 
Uh, so for instance, this is our competitions folder, but if I wanted to uh, export an image, let's just say I come across something that I really love and I want to use it for print competition, I'd go ahead and, uh, and export that directly into this folder. So I've set up these separate export presets. And the way you can do that is by right clicking here, uh, hang on a second, clicking new folder, typing in the name of your new folder, and then going and saving the, uh, the name of the actual preset that you're gonna use. So here uh, I have one that we use for print competition. So if I'm going through a, a wedding, I'm calling a wedding or I'm going through a raw wedding and I see an image that I want to come back to, to to edit for print competition later, I'll use this export preset. And what this does is it's going to send uh, the raw image. So you can see down here that, we, uh, that we're using the original file or is it here? Image format, the original file, which would be raw, and that's going to be exported directly into this uh, this raw image um, folder uh, in our competitions folder in Dropbox. Um, we have an export folder, uh, sorry, an export preset set up for our masters as soon as we're done editing. Uh, another one for web, and then we have another one for post select as well too. Uh, and then uh, finally, I have a social media export. Now we have a separate folder set up for social media images in Dropbox that we would go ahead and export to. And this is a little different from web. Web, export for web is more uh, or less really used for blog images, for things that are gonna go on our website. Export for social media, those images are formatted a little bit differently to take advantage of Facebook's algorithms with as uh, little bit of compression as possible. So we use uh, this preset in order to post images on our Facebook or social media. Uh, we use Hootsuite to do all of our social media posts. Um, that's all for today, guys. I hope that helps a little bit with our, um, with your workflow. Uh, I know that when I started out, these were questions that I, I really, really, uh, had to figure out for myself. There weren't a lot of good resources out there for, for solid workflows. And as our business grew and we, uh, we took on more work, um, workflow became a big issue for us. So if you guys have any questions or if you have any, um, any suggestions, uh, for the other people who are watching this video, Feel free to leave them in the comments uh, or go ahead and shoot me over an email and I'd uh, love to hear what you got to say. Thank you guys for checking out my article again and I'll catch you next month in Shutter Magazine.